Hallelujah. God is gracious. Hallelujah. 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 If you've been with us the last few weeks, you've been a part of our sharing of Let There Be Light. We've been in this sermon series entitled Let There Be Light. And in the midst of this sermon series, Let There Be Light, what we've really been sharing upon are a couple of different things. We, you know, on Easter Sunday, when we began this sermon series, we ended up really just sharing how the light of Christ is what brings life. And by God's grace, folks came to the cross on that day, and we praise the Lord for that. But if you were here last Sunday, we began to share a message entitled, Light for your path, and we've been talking about light. Light for your path, and if you were here last Sunday, what I shared with you is this sermon series that we are immersed in is of incredible significance. It's incredibly important. It's probably one of the most important sermon series of your life. So we encourage you, if you're not able to be here on a Sunday or on a Tuesday, Please go to our YouTube page. Please chime in. You can, you know, live stream us if you can't get here. Livestream.com and just put in the search Restoration Community Church and you'll be able to watch us live even if you're unable to make it to the house. Nevertheless, on Tuesday, if you were here, you had opportunity to, to, to really be a part of a real vibrant discussion where we went a little bit deeper as it relates to our identity in Christ, our identity in Christ. And man, oh man, there are some things in us that if we ever caught a full revelation of, we'd be different, 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 different. Today, we're continuing this same line of thinking. Let there be light. But we're going to focus not just upon our identity, but we're going to focus upon the mindset that I believe from creation, the Lord created us to walk in. We're going to be sharing a message this morning entitled the dominion mindset, the dominion mindset, the dominion mindset, dominion mindset. But man, oh man, oh man, it has been a journey. It's been a journey. I've been living in this conversation about, and this thought, this continuous thought upon who has the Lord made us, and as a result of who he has made us, what are we then to do? Who has he, who has he made us, and then what are we then to do? If you were here Tuesday, we had this conversation about how the Lord has called us children of God. We're actually children of the Most High God, children of God. But what does that mean, that we're a child of God? What does that mean, that we're actually children of God? Man, we began to talk about our birthright as children, and sometimes you might have a birthright as a child, but not be granted access to what is actually yours. How many of y'all are aware that while children have an inheritance, we pray that they have an inheritance, in some cases they do, some cases they don't, but in many cases children have an inheritance and that's what the godly thing ought to be, that we ought to leave our children an inheritance. But they're not able to access that inheritance until they're able to manage that inheritance. Amen? Amen. You know why? Because if the Lord were to give you what you actually have access to because it's yours to begin with, if the Lord were to allow you to have that prematurely without you being ready to actually manage and access what's yours to begin with, that might actually lead you further away from the Lord than closer. Think about it in this way. Let's say you gave somebody a million dollars. And they didn't know how to manage $10. What do you think they would do with that million dollars? They would splurge and they would live the fast life for about three weeks. <laughs> then they'd be in debt because a million dollars went much quicker than they thought. 
and they thought they had when they really didn't have. And that's the picture here in terms of the child of God. The child of God has as his birthright the blessings of God. Believe it or not, we have access to the power of God. On Tuesday night, we actually looked at this scripture that literally says, you and I are gods. Huh? What? Man, too bad you weren't here part of that conversation. That was a great dialogue. But here's the heart of God for you and I today. The heart of God for you and I today is that we might come to a place where we understand who he has made us so that we can ultimately walk in the fullness of this birthright, of who we actually have access to being. So today, we're going to focus on the aspect of our identity that I think really governs how we then proceed, and that's the mind, the mind. Having the dominion mindset. I'd like for you to open up your Bible with me. We're going to be in... To, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We briefly ran by this on Tuesday night, but we left this to begin to be able to kind of unpack this a little bit more today and then go even further. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're going to start in verse number 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 in verse, verse 11. Y'all there? Amen. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which... Man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, verse 14, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Look at this, y'all, this latter part of this verse. Y'all see this. But we have the mind of Christ. But we have the mind of Christ. But we have the mind of Christ. All right, y'all, we're going on this journey, and I pray you're hanging with me. One of my favorite authors is named Bishop David Oyedipo, and here's what he says in regards to this verse. If you are born again, then wisdom is your heritage, and that is normal because like begets like. If your father is the only wise God, you cannot be the only dummy child. There is wisdom in you because you have the mind of God, the mind of Christ. Now, Let's flush this out just a minute. Now, do you ever think about yourself as having the mind of Christ? No, right? How could I have the mind of Christ? It's part of the box that we keep ourselves in, hindering us from actually walking in the fullness of who the Lord has made us. We have the mind of Christ. Now, I want you to indulge me for a moment, and I want you to pull out your smartphone. Can y'all do this? Pull out your cell phone just for a minute, right? And I want you to indulge me just for a minute. I want you to go to selfie mode on your phone, right? I want you to go to selfie mode. Go ahead, go to selfie mode, go to selfie mode. Indulge me for a moment, right? So here you go, here you go. You got your camera on, right? And then you got to switch it so that you're on selfie mode. You looking at yourself. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Y'all looking at yourself, y'all on selfie mode? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let me see y'all phones just for a minute. I want to make sure y'all on selfie phone. Y'all's indulging me here. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, now that you're on selfie mode, right? 
and you're looking at yourself in this camera, right? I want you, oh, my, my fault, in your phone. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to say, I have the mind of Christ. All right. Now, I need you to look at yourself as you're saying this, and I want you to repeat this. Repeat this. Let's say this again. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. Now, here's my question to you. As you looked at yourself, say that you have the mind of Christ. Did you believe yourself? Okay, three people believe themselves. Here's the truth. Many of us, if you were to have recorded yourself saying, I have the mind of Christ, and you looked at your own video, you know what would have happened? You might have said, huh, I don't know if I even believed what I said. And you know what's real? Because we don't believe the word of God, we limit ourselves to access to what the word of God promises us. Okay, maybe I'll try over here. Maybe y'all will talk back with me. Because we don't actually believe what God says in his word about us, we can't walk in the fullness of the revelation of the word of God. My friends, if you have the mind of Christ, the same mind that created the heavens and the earth, the same mind that enabled uh, uh, and built and erected the, 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 the temples and, and laid out the design and made the ark and all this stuff, the mind of Christ is in you. My gosh, you're not a slouch. You shouldn't be failing your classes. You shouldn't be passed over because you can't do certain things. Why? Because the mind of Christ is in you. And me. But do we actually believe it becomes the question. And this becomes the heart of really the word of the Lord today. Because here's the truth. The Lord says right in the beginning, let us make man in our likeness and in our image. And he will have dominion. He shall have dominion in the earth. Right? And if the word of the Lord calls us and creates us to walk in a certain way, yet we don't fully believe what the word of the Lord states as it relates to us, we then are no longer eligible to walk in the way in which the Lord has called us to walk because of our lack of belief. Can you do me a favor? If you Think about this just for a moment. Has there ever been a part of your life where for whatever reason, you've simply thought you couldn't do it? Whether it was to lose weight, whether it was to save a certain amount of money, whether it was to go on a vacation, and you just thought to yourself, man, that'd be nice, but I just can't do that. Y'all don't have to raise your hands or anything but I want you to just simply think about this for a moment. If that's you, guess what? Because you thought in a certain way about a particular thing, that thing came to pass. Because your mindset was, I can't do this. Guess what? You can't do it. Even though internal to you is the capacity to do it. You've got the mind of Christ. The scripture says it about you and me. We got them. There's nothing we can't do. Yet we place ourselves in these boxes, limiting our own progress and abilities. And as a result, we find ourselves sometimes. Do you know the Lord closes certain doors just to stretch you and point you into your position of destiny and wealth? Right. And then you know what we do? We say, Lord, man. What are you doing, Lord? You know I can't do that. Woe is me. Woe is me. And the Lord's sitting there saying, I'm trying to guide you, help you, get to the place where I can bless you. But you don't believe me. You don't believe what I'm saying about you. We have got to change our mindset. We have got to change how we think. We have got to stop placing God in a box and by, by, as a result, placing ourselves in a box 
so that we can actually begin to walk as the Lord has called us and made us. Hmm. If you go with me to the beginning here, Genesis chapter 1. There's something pretty remarkable that we see there. There are a couple of things, but let's just go there. Genesis 1, I think I have it here. And we're going to start in verse 28. Verse 28. Verse 28. Because here's our bottom line. We need a renewed mind. We need to walk in this dominion mindset. We need a renewed mind. Verse 28. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, govern it, reign over the fish in the, of the sea, the birds in the sky, all the animals that scurry along the ground. Then God said, look, I have given you every seed bearing plant throughout the earth, all fruit trees for your food, and I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, and the small animals that scurry along the ground, everything that has life. And that is what happened. Then God looked over all he had made, he had sought. It was very good, and evening passed and morning came, marking the sixth day. There are three things I see in this text that I pray that you take a quick look with at me before we really delve into this mindset. Very first thing we've been talking about already, we see that God charges man to rule. God charges man to walk in dominion. Second thing we see is he makes this assembly line for man. It's almost like a factory set up here. God has prepared all the birds, right, and the fish and all the animals that are crawling. And he says, man, rule. So it's almost like what God has done is he is the, 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 the master uh, or the, 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 the chief boss, if you will, of the, 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 the factory plant, right? And he has made the assembly line, put it in place. And what he has done is said, Man, now that I've made preparation for you, all you've got to do now is manage this conveyor belt, manage this assembly line. Do your part, and then you will reap the blessings that will come. And then it ends off with God. It's almost like he inspects what he did. And he says, this was good. This was good. Man has dominion over all of this stuff. But here's what's interesting. We're made in God's light, image and likeness, right? And God says we're to have dominion. But God is the one who initially had dominion. And what does God's dominion look like? That's what I want to push here for a moment. Because here's the truth. In our cultural context, we think about rule as someone telling someone what to do, when to do it. I'm the boss and you're going to listen to me because I rule, right? But I don't think that's how God rules at all. That's not God's picture of dominion at all. That's a part of it. Part of it is putting order in place. But I really think God's heart here is that we might see the whole picture of what he means when he says man shall have dominion. He says dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air. Right? But let me ask you a question. If you have some fish, right? or even a bird, right? And you want that bird to do what you ask of it, right? Don't you have to also care for that bird? You've got to nurture that bird. You've got to feed that bird, right? Why? Because in order for him to do his part, you have got to do your part. So here's the fuller picture of God's dominion call to us and charge to us. It's not just that we should rule in the earth as we think about rule, but rule also entails love, care, service. So a dominion mindset means I'm committed to putting in order what needs to be put in order, but at the same time, I'm committed to caring for the things that I need to put in order so that they can function. How does this play out for us? Frustration abounds in the life of the believer. Why? Because we're supposed to rule and we try to rule, but nothing seems to fall into place when we try to live out God's call and mandate for our lives. And I wonder if we're actually taking the time to put in order what needs to be put in order and care for it, nurture it, so that we could actually rule it. Hmm. Food for thought. Food for thought. This mindset of dominion. It means 
I think not with this negative thought process that I can't do, but I think with the full knowledge of my identity, knowing that who the Lord has made me is in his image. And so because I'm his image bearer, I can rule. But I also, as, as I am ruling, know that I also need to care for those whom I'm ruling and what it is I'm ruling over. It's a remarkable thought, an incredibly important thought at that. To rule this dominion mindset, it really entails these three things. And I pray that you get these three components in your note. The first one is this confidence and boldness rooted in your identity. The second one is governance and establishing and the maintaining of order. But the third one is care. Sacrificial service, love, and care for the things you're to rule over. These three components are what comprise a dominion mindset. Do we have that? Do we live out that? As you all know, next week, I'm incredibly excited to release Work God's Way. Many of you have been made aware, and I pray that you guys stick around and are part of that. We're incredibly excited about that. I want to share a brief story that, um, that I share in the book, and it's my prayer that, that you take heed to the heart behind both the story and what it charges us with as it relates to rule. Story, some of you may have heard, because I believe I've shared it at some point here before, the story of an eagle who thought he was a chicken. There was a certain man who went through the forest seeking any bird of interest he might find. He caught a young eagle, brought it home, and put it among the chickens and ducks and turkeys and he gave the eagle chicken food, even though the eagle was the king of the birds. Five years later, a naturalist came to see him and after passing through the garden said, that bird is an eagle, not a chicken. Yes, said the owner, but I have turned it into a chicken. It's no longer an eagle. No, said the naturalist, it's an eagle still. It has the heart of an eagle. It has the wingspan of an eagle. It will soar like an eagle. No, said the owner, it's a chicken, and it will never fly. They agreed to test it. The naturalist picked up the eagle, held it up, and said with great intensity, Eagle, you're an eagle. You belong to the sky and not the ground. Stretch forth your wings and fly. The eagle turned his way, and then he turned that way, and then looking down, he saw the chickens eating their food, and down he jumped to his chicken friends doing chicken things. The owner said, I told you it was a chicken. No, said the naturalist to the farmer, it's an eagle. Give it another chance tomorrow. So the next day, he took it to the top of the house and said, eagle, you're an eagle. Stretch forth your wings and fly. But again, the eagle, seeing the chickens feeding, jumped down and fed with them and walked with them. He saw the chickens doing chicken things, so he joined in with them to do more chicken things. Then the owner said, I told you it was a chicken. No, said the naturalist, it's an eagle. And it still has the heart of an eagle. Only give it one more chance and I know I will make it fly tomorrow. The next morning, the naturalist rose early and took the eagle outside the city, away from the houses to the foot of a high mountain. The sun was just rising, gliding the top of the mountain with gold and every crag was glistening in the joy of the beautiful morning. He picked up the eagle, the naturalist did, and he said, eagle, thou art an eagle. You belong to the sky and not to the earth. Stretch forth your wings and fly. The eagle looked around and trembled as if new life were coming to it, but it did not fly. The naturalist then made it look straight up at the sun. Suddenly, Instinctively, it stretched out its wings, and with the screech of an eagle, it flew. It flew, never to return to the ground again. The battle over your identity is an intense one. The 
question is, are you an eagle trapped in chicken coop living? Or are you willing to finally look up to the sun and say enough is enough of what I've been through and being relegated and trapped to the ground. An eagle I am, an eagle is where I'm going, so I'm committed to soaring. Why? Because who I am on the inside might not look like what's on the outside, but I know who I am, and so I'm going to have to fly. I gotta fly. I can no longer be bound by my stuff. That's not me. I'm an eagle. I've got to fly. I've got to fly. I've got to fly. Are you an eagle? Or are you a chicken? Are you an eagle? Trapped in chicken coop living. Or have you come to the place where you've said, just like the eagle, enough is enough. I'm looking to the sun and I'm about ready to fly. If you're in this place today and you know that you know that you've grappled with chicken coop living. You know who the Lord has called you to be, yet when you look around you, that's not who you are are or how you are living and you find yourself kind of like this eagle for 10 15 20 years saved in church yet still relegated to milk instead of solid spiritual food and you're frustrated but You can't seem to get past your surroundings and your circumstance. You know internal to you is this eagle who wants to fly, who desires to fly. Yet it's almost like you've got a ball and chain on your ankles hindering you from flying. If you're in this place today and that's you, I'm going to invite you to simply, with every eye closed and every head bowed, If that's you, just lift up your hands. And believe you me, you're not alone in this place. The heart of God for you is to no longer be trapped, but to be free to fly as the Lord has made you. Father, right now as we come before you, we give you praise. We thank you. We honor you. We know, dear Father God, that as we stand upon your word and walk in the fullness of our identity, knowing that you've embedded in us the mind of Christ, that we can do all things to you through you who give us strength. We aren't trapped. We're freed in the name of Jesus. We are no longer bound by our past. And stuff that's been said about us, no, that's not who we are. But as your children, endowed and endued with your spirit, Lord, our birthright is to walk freely as sons and daughters of the Most High. Kings, priests is who you've called us, Lord. Meaning we've got unabashed, unhindered access to you, Lord. The wall of separation has been broken. We can come into your presence, Lord. As a result, Father, walk in the fullness of who you've made us. That's our heart's desire in this season, in this hour. To walk in this boldness, this supernatural boldness that comes from you because we know who we are. Lord, in this season, in this hour, I pray more than anything that you might open up our eyes, eyes of our understanding, Lord, and help us to see that there is more to life than being relegated by our circumstances and our surroundings. Rather, what you desire is that we walk in accordance to your spirit in the fullness of what you desire for us. As a king, as a queen, as a priest, 
as a child of the Most High God. We thank you, we honor you, we give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Can we give the Lord a praise in this place? <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Can y'all just do me this favor? Shout with me. I'm an eagle. I'm an eagle. Can y'all do this one more time with me? I'm an eagle. I'm an eagle. You might be a chicken, but I'm an eagle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Eagle, stretch out your wings and fly. This week, fly. I want to encourage you, believe God for the unbelievable. Believe, begin to say, God, I struggled with this in my past, but that's no longer who I am going to be in Jesus' name. Why? Because I'm an eagle. I want to charge you this week to begin to stand on God's word and walk in faith to his glory. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I can't wait to hear the testimonies of all the eagles that come back talking about here's what God done did as I began to fly towards the sun in Jesus' name. Amen. Whew, amen, amen, amen.